Hello, Solidus here and welcome to a, another walkthrough and this time we are going to be looking at the return of Zalatath. Yes, the Shadow Priest artifact weapon has returned for Battle for Azeroth and it provides a pretty interesting quest line for you to follow with an interesting choice for you to make at the end. So let's get into it then. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open your map and you're going to want to check for the world quest which is the Naga invasion. For me it was in Zuldazar and you go there and you need to kill mobs to find yourself a Najaran medallion. Now fortunately for me and I don't know if this is just standard it only took one mob so I don't actually have to complete the world quest. Upon looting the body you get the medallion and a quest appears and you need to go and speak to Kojo the Tortolan. So off you go and you go and show him the medallion and he tells you about a strange artifact that he keeps hearing whispers from which he's found with similar markings on it and it turns out that it is actually Zalatath, the, the weapon, the dagger that we saw um, Sylvanas holding in a slide at BlizzCon last year which has caused a lot of people to come up with some theories of what's going to happen. And essentially what you need to do is pick it up and then go to a nearby altar, a makeshift altar, and place the weapon down, at which point Zalatath will start whispering to you and says that her soul is empty and that she needs to be filled um, with the blood of souls. Fortunately for you, there are some nearby Naga that you go and kill. And this seems to be fairly random, but for me it was about five or six mobs, at which point Zalatath said she was well fed, and you restore her power. Zalatath then tells you about three ancient artifacts that the servant of Nazoth are trying to find. Now these end up being the relics which are going to make an appearance in the Crucible of Storms, the raid that will be opening next week as of recording this. So she asks you to go and find them before the servants do. The first one that you are going to locate is um, a void stone, and this is located in Drustvar, which is on a cliff overlooking the ocean. When you get there, there will be a mob that will spawn, which you need to kill, and then the void stone will appear in front of you, which you need to take, and then you click on the little action button that appears and activate it. At this point, Zalatath will then tape on a more human-like form, looks like a nightborn form, and will ask you to go to a second stone, which is located in the harbour in Tyragard Sound. There is a lieutenant there that spawns that holds the key which opens the chest that stands behind Harlan Suite, where he usually is, and inside there is the trident, the second relic, which you then need to um, take back to Zalatath, who will then tell you about the final relic, which is located in Voldoon. So there's a little bit of travelling going around here, but generally speaking, by the time you get there, your flight master's whistle and your hearthstone is off cooldown. Once you've ran to the cave, you then need to go inside and find a mob called Toatana. For any Moana fans out there, he may look very, very familiar. A big crab with jewels all over, and he will hold the third and final relic. He's very easy to solo. Um, as a 392 outlaw rogue, I had no issue in doing this. Once you've got the third relic, Zalatath will then tell you to head to the Principle of Oblivion, which is located in Stormsong. Once you get there, you'll meet up with Zalatath, and you'll find yourself outside the entrance to the new raid, the Crucible of Storms, of which you enter, and you go in, and you see the big room that you are in, and... Zalatath is standing there and asks you to place the three relics down, at which point the in-game cutscene begins. Hear me, God of the Deep. I have brought you the Opener, the Bringer of Truths, the torch that lights the way. Honor our bargain. Free me to find my own fate. No. But the blade must remain to serve my will. A fair exchange. Shadows guide you, my dear friend. We will meet again. I am certain of it. I have dreamed your destiny, mortal. The hour is close at hand. Oh. 
it's quite a short in-game cutscene. Don't expect anything fantastic in there. And to be honest, it's something we've all been expecting. Um, but essentially, Nazoth gi gives you um, a gift, which is essentially this giant eyeball, which sits on top of your head instead of a helm. Now, this will stay on you for a period of time. And finally, you will go outside and you need to return to your faction um, capital city. So for me, it was Zuldazar, and you go and speak to Queen Talanji, and she will give you two quests. At which point, one of the quests is the new raid quest, which will ask you to defeat the last boss in the raid. Um, you can expect to be able to do this on any difficulty, as there is no difficulty requirements in the quest. So once LFR opens the week after the raid, you will then be able to um, go and complete this quest for 1500 artifact power and the second quest is to go and get the curse removed now you don't have to if you do not want to and you can just abandon this quest at which point if you do um, you will hear um, Zalatath or Nazoth speak to you for one last time and you will keep the gift of Nazoth on you at all times now the interesting thing here is it's giving the player a choice you can either remove the eye or you can keep it. If you decide to keep it, um, you will be able to run around and you will be able to see anybody else that has kept the eye on their head. Meaning people who haven't won't see this and won't know who's kept what. If you decide to remove the curse, then you are given a toy as compensation which will apply the eye to you for a short period of time if you wish. So essentially what we're going to have is we're going to have people on both the Horde and Alliance which will have made a choice whether to keep this gift of Nazoth or not. This leaves question as to what Blizzard is going to do with this in future patches. Because ultimately we cannot be running around with the eye on our heads forever. So something has to happen with this. If not, I'm going to be pretty disappointed because this is one of the first times in a long time where I felt like I've been given a choice um, into how my story in Battle for Azeroth goes along. That is the quest line and story so far. It's going to be interesting to see where they go with this, like I say. We know that there's going to be a lot more. I really hope that it's not just going to stop the faction war and everything's forgiven and we have to join up to fight this off. Um, but I don't think that that is going to happen. Blizzard have been quite clear on this, that that isn't going to be what necessarily happens and in patch 8.2 the um, battle between the Horde and Alliance is still very much at the forefront of the campaign. So there you go, the quest line probably takes around half an hour. It took me longer because I kept getting distracted with little jobs in between but yeah you're going to have to run all of your characters through it. The next character that I take through it I'm not going to keep the curse just so I can see what happens from both sides of the story. So let me know what you think of the quest line. Let me know what you think is going to happen and how Blizzard's going to take this. Um, and yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all very soon.